Namaste. So in the 12 years or so that this channel has been in existence, uh, you'll see on the site that it was established 10 years ago, but I had another one before that. And in the uh, five or seven years before that, I had another one, <laughs> all on different themes. But I count it from about 12 years ago because that's when we produced our first major series, Being in the World. But in the time from then until now, I have gone from existentialism to the Buddha's teaching to Shakta Bhakti to Shiva Bhakti Shaiva and finally to Kevala Advaita, unmixed Advaita, non-duality, Shankaracharya's teaching. And as I told in this video, I have reached the end of knowledge. That knowledge, once knowing which, there is no need for any further education or learning because one can derive everything from the first principles, which begins with Brahma, the absolute the ungraspable. See, and this is the problem. Once you reach Brahman and you actually realize Brahman, you go beyond knowledge, beyond the known, beyond the knowable, because Brahman is inherently ungraspable. So we live in a world, see, this is the problem. <laughs> we live in a world where everything is thought uh, by the, the science to be inherently graspable, inherently understandable, and structurally analyzed, and so on like that. But see, Brahman doesn't have any structure. <laughs> so anyway, I've reached a point where I cannot go, I mean, I, I run out of gas, you know? If I try to go and do another intellectual rap about Brahman, I just, like, have nothing to say, right? I have unlimited amount to experience, but that experience is without knowledge, without knowing, and without a separate knower. In other words, it's non-dual, <laughs> What can you say? You can't say anything about it. So, I'm going to have to radically shift the platform of my teaching uh, to something nonverbal, probably music. I don't know yet. And that's because of the astrological situation coming up, which is what this video is really about. <laughs> I just like to show how it comes out of my personal experience, rather than just book learning. On April 8th, there is going to be a total eclipse of the sun. And this eclipse, which is centered in like northern Mexico and central Texas, and up on into the grain belt in the Midwest, in the US, is going to be bonkers. And it's going to be bonkers because it exactly aligns, I mean, to the second with the Varshapal, the origin of the Varshapal, or yearly chart for astrological year 2024. How is that? Well, the Mina Purnima, the full moon in the sign of Pisces, is the official beginning of the astrological year. And this year, it comes exactly on the eclipse. And you see in the upper left-hand corner, that's Pisces. The chart is cast for Nagambo, Sri Lanka. And we can see there's a big lineup in Pisces, Moon, Sun, Rahu, Venus, and Neptune. 
The major players here are the moon, sun, and Rahu, and they're all there in Revati Nakshatra. Revati is the last nakshatra. Pisces is the last sign. And altogether, these things signify a major ending, a big change. And it's going to be sudden and unexpected, although the tensions have been building up, look just below in the third house, Aquarius, and they are about to conjoin. That happens in a couple of weeks. The other thing you have to look at is Mercury retrograde. They're at 36 minutes of Aries. And Mercury retrograde, in other words is rushing backwards into Revati Nakshatra in Pisces at its highest rate of speed, retrograde. So then when it hits Pisces, it's going to be in Gandhanta. And Gandhanta means drowning. So since Mercury, Buddha, signifies intelligence, everybody's intelligence is going to be completely confused. Mercury in the first going backwards full speed into Gandanta in Pisces means uh, this is going to hit like lightning out of nowhere. It's going to be a black swan. Something has got to go. The chart is drawn for Nagambo in this part of the world. And here's the band of validity of this chart. So in this part of the world, in Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and most of India, it's a pretty good chart. But if you look at the U.S. locational chart for this, oh boy, are they in trouble. It's probably going to happen in Texas. Something on or about April 8th, that is going to shock the world and throw everyone into confusion. In other words, the goalposts are going to move radically, majorly, overnight. And nobody's going to be ready for it because nobody knows where it's coming from. Now, yes, you could make some educated guesses based on the news and so forth, but I'll leave that up to the forecasters. <laughs> we don't try to predict individual events. Why? Because that raises the error rate dramatically. And, uh, I mean, the only area where I can make a prediction is in my own life, really. That's the only one I know well enough. I can, I can tell it's what's coming for me, is a complete radical change in how I present myself to the world. And I'm not sure what that's going to be. Like I said, I can make an educated guess and say, well, maybe I'm going to go back into music. But it could just as easily be astrology or anything else. We'll see what happens. And so should you. Wait. Don't make any plans except Plan not to make plans. Plan to be open and ready for a big change. Not sure what it's going to be, but it's going to be a doozy. <laughs> so strap in. Huh? Have a cup of tea, as the Japanese say, and get ready for a wild ride. The good news is, this also creates an incredible opportunity to surf this change. Be one of the early adopters of whatever this change calls up, or uh, be one of the people who's ready to roll with it and just do whatever is necessary. And you could be on the forefront of radical revolution. And this is going to be felt all over the world. India and Sri Lanka are going to be largely immune because the eclipse is in the third house. So I could also do charts for other parts of the world. And if you want to hear about it, let me know in the comments. 
But that's what's happening around here. Um, and I might do a separate video just on the meaning of this eclipse over the next year for Sri Lanka and India. Uh, because I know I have a lot of followers in India. Not so many in Sri Lanka. <laughs> you can count them on the, on the finger of one hand. <laughs> but anyway, we are uh, looking at a time of discontinuous change, quantum change, where things are going along in one state and suddenly they flip. And the end state here is unknown at the present time. We'll know more when we see the causes, if we analyze the causes, but still that's only enough for a guess. You see, the, the government and the economy and the society and stuff like that all rest on a location, a piece of land, a chunk of planet Earth, a particular set of latitudes and longitudes that are connected with an astronomical or astrological event. So it's different for every place in the world. For each roughly 15 degrees of longitude. So in the U.S., when this eclipse occurs, is at about 10 in the morning in uh, New York and Washington. And so what would that be? Nine, eight or nine in the morning in uh, Texas and the Midwest. This is going to have a tremendously focused effect on North America. And here, the eclipse isn't even visible, and it occurs at midnight, <laughs> which, of course, is one of the sandhyas, one of the four times during the day when the energy shift occurs. And for us, midnight, you know, this is the witching hour. This is the Shiva time. This is the, uh, the time when everything goes into Sushupti. So, you know, this is a very powerful time. And if you stay up and do ceremony and do mantras and stuff uh, during this, don't go out. Don't travel, especially. During the time from about one week before to maybe two or three weeks after. And, you know, even a month or two after could have effects on travel, but especially during Mercury retrograde. This one is going to be a very powerful one, so don't travel. Stay at home and do something to set yourself up for whatever this big change is going to be. What I do is mantra and ceremonies, you know, uh, ritual magic using the formless deity of Shiva, the Shiva Linga. So... That's what I have to say right now, and I have a lot more to say to those who are involved in the continuation project, and I'm going to post a separate video just for them. So, Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.